Hello, uh, I'm Kande, I work for Collabora and the work that I'm going to present here is uh, not uh, mine in that large extent, it's mostly done by Miklos and Tomasz who have done there all the heavy lifting, so uh, I'm here on the stage but the, the, the real guys are, uh, well, not even in the audience, but maybe they will come. <laughs> Either way, so VCL. Uh, VCL is our um, toolkit that is responsible for all the drawing on the screen that you can see in LibreOffice. It's, uh, has, it has some quite long history from what I know, it is about 20 years or something like that. And uh, thanks to that, uh, well, it can be a bit twisted in some places. On the other hand, it's what we have, and over the years it evolved into something that is uh, like cross-platform, usable with the most modern um, Linux systems, Windows system, and everything, so it's, it's good enough. And, well, we have to love it, because it's what we have. So, um, the render context work that I'm going to present here is just part of the work that has been happening uh, for 5.0. Uh, for the other pieces, uh, please just uh, come to the talk that is just after my talk. Uh, Michael will talk about uh, lots of things that actually uh, were necessary in order for this render context to be, to be actually possible. So, the basic question uh, that we have to lay here uh, in order to be able to uh, do double buffering was uh, when do we actually draw. So in VCL um, or in LibreOffice in general uh, we can draw in many places and that is uh, when painting. So that means that uh, when, the, when the paint method is actually triggered by VCL uh, main, main loop. Uh, this, is, this is okay. Uh, this is uh, what we need. This is what is necessary. But also, uh, in many places, it happens that it is called uh, in event handlers. So you press a key and something is directly drawn on the screen. Um, you put mouse over a widget and uh, like it, is, uh, it is drawn directly. And it, this, is, this is not what helps us. Also, in some cases, um, the painting can be actually triggered by timer. So there's a, some timer that goes on and on and sometimes it just uh, paints something on the screen somewhere in the corner uh, where the user notices that or not. And uh, also uh, it can be an, at a random time. So like in Writer there's a, uh, there's a layout algorithm that is triggered uh, from time to time to lay out things. And uh, for in the debug mode, we have a small rectangle uh, in the top left corner that indicates if it was uh, uh, like if the layout is finished or not yet, and that is do done by by direct drawing as well. Uh, compared to that, um, the ideal state would be uh, just uh, to have the painting triggered in a controlled way. So it would mean that only the paint method actually paints and it and we are able to know in like when it happens. So uh, so it uh, in the ideal state it would be triggered only by the VCL. Uh, so only in the given time uh, when we have the complete control over the things uh, that are happening. And uh, so we can this this way we can we can much more or much better control what is happening, uh, like uh, do various uh, setups and teardowns uh, that might be necessary, for example, for OpenGL. Uh, to be able to do that, uh, actually we have to avoid the direct painting. So we have to uh, only invalidate the area and let it up to VCL to find the correct time. Uh, for uh, for triggering the paint itself, and uh, uh, based on that, VCL decides uh, decides like what to paint, where, um, if to paint bigger area, small area, and, and everything. And also in the ideal state, we would like to decouple uh, the actual painting from the VCL window. So that means uh, that it wouldn't be impossible uh, to call uh, some drawing uh, on itself uh, on, the, on the window. So uh, in that case, uh, the VCL window would become a bit more abstract. But on the other hand, it would allow us uh, like um, 
discourage people very intensely from, from trying to draw directly. So I've mentioned render context, so what's that? So that's a, um, that's a class uh, that implements the, the drawing itself. So uh, that, uh, like when uh, we uh, happen to decouple, decouple the, the window uh, from the render context, it means that the render context itself is responsible for the lower parts of, of, of the drawing. So render context would contain the method, methods to uh, paint rectangle, paint a line, uh, and things like that. And, uh, but not <laughs> the window. Um, Currently, it is so that the window, VCL window, is inherited from the from the output device, and uh, uh, so it means that it allows the programmer to actually call painting on, on itself, you know, um, directly directly calling some draw rectangle, draw whatever, and uh, we want to avoid that. Instead, um, the render context would would be the implementation of the output device. It would contain. It would be the only class that would actually uh, have access to these uh, to these things, uh, to, to the painting. And uh, uh, it would be it would be uh, by VCL um, passed as a parameter to the paint method, uh, so that uh, so that when you you are painting in the paint method, uh, you have this uh, you have this uh, render context where you can do the operations that are necessary. Uh, actually, what is wrong with the direct paints? Why uh, do we need to do this uh, at all? So, um, so uh, in cases uh, like the, uh, as I was uh, as, as I was talking about, in these cases when we uh, when we uh, trigger the drawing directly from the code from the from some higher levels <laughs> than from VCL we actually do not have the render context. So uh, it means that uh, in, the, in the ideal state, when we get rid of the, or when we split uh, the, the VCL window uh, to not, to be, not to be actually inherited from the output device, it means that, uh, that like, um, the direct draws wouldn't uh, have the possibility to actually set up the, the render context themselves. So, uh, so we needed uh, to do the cleanup here, and uh, also we needed some other pieces uh, in the in the VCL change, and that was uh, that was the, like the, the idle work uh, that actually made the invalidates fast. So previously invalidates were triggered by a timer; it is not that uh, not so anymore. And uh, uh, but this uh, this changes to make actually uh, the invalidate work. Uh, have to be done carefully uh, because if you just uh, uh, change the direct draws to to invalidates without uh, testing and without thinking, uh, you can easily uh, come to a situation when you cause an invalidate loop. So it means that you will come to the code that causes an invalidate, um, which uh, which uh, then causes draw, and then it again causes invalidates, and you are in a loop. So we had several of these. To, have to fix that, and how it actually fits uh, the the double buffering. So the double buffering is uh, is what we want to achieve here, and that is uh, that means that uh, the content is not drawn directly on the screen, but first it is drawn into a buffer that is then copied to the screen. This allows you to avoid flickering, uh, for example, when you are resizing windows and. Uh, uh, or when you are uh, when you are painting like more, um, for for example, widgets that that are more uh, more hard to paint. Like there's many operations that, that need to be done uh, in order to be painted. So um, with this uh, to achieve the double frame, when we have the render context, uh, we can do uh, quite like relatively easy changes in the in the paint uh, in the main paint. Um, engine uh, that is in VCL, that is responsible for the rendering and uh, we do it so that we can set up the buffer uh, for the double buffering first, then do the paints uh, as, uh, as we were doing before or very similar to as uh, we have been doing before and then uh, when we are done with this painting we can copy it uh, back uh, to the screen again. 
So like when we have done the heavy lifting of the of the render context, then the, the double buffering is there like nearly for free, one would say. Uh, but uh, the render context work was the hard part, so it had an easy part, which was adding the parameter to the to the paint methods, uh, which was possible using a client plugin. But on the other hand, the everything everything else was, was just hard. So uh, thanks so much to Tomasz and Miklos, uh, who were doing all the heavy lifting there, and uh, also Laszlo and others, uh, the fixing of, uh, of consequences that. Uh, that that were necessary to, to be done after after the the context rework. So just to uh, just to show you some of these examples, what were the hard parts here? Uh, so uh, so in many cases, uh, the the drawings uh, in the paint uh, as it was before, uh, we have done lots of this server work uh, in the render context. Uh, was uh, very uh, stateful. So it means that in the constructor of, uh, of some widget, uh, you've set up, for example, the background of, the, of uh, what you were drawing and uh, also colors of the fonts and stuff like that. And later, uh, when it came to the paint, it was uh, just expected that it is all there, it is all set up and uh, that you can just, uh, just call the drawing methods. This is not the case with the render context anymore. Uh, you have to do these setups uh, directly in the paint uh, method because um, the, the render context is uh, supposed to be set up from scratch and uh, like so, so, so the paint itself has to be stateless. Um, in many cases in the, uh, in the LibreOffice code, the output device was actually cached. So in many cases, it was so that, that some code um, did some drawing, then re um, remember uh, the output device in a, in a member variable, and then in some completely unrelated pieces of the code, then again, try to access this, this cached um, output device, which of course works with the direct drawing, but that doesn't work that well uh, when, you, when you have the render context actually valid only for the time of the of the painting. Um, then blinking cursor. Blinking cursor is another um, hard part uh, because uh, how is it implemented now is that it actually uh, inverts the, 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 the background or you know the, the picture that you have on the screen. So it, it just inverts that and it again doesn't work that well with the uh, with uh, render context that can be like whatever whatever back buffer uh, and uh, that is alive only for the time of the of the painting and later when you are blinking uh, using uh, making the blink using the direct drawing or in some random time um, like you can fetch the image from the screen actually but it's just uh, like terribly slow and uh, something that you do not want to do. And uh, one of the challenging things was uh, actually that, uh, that the, the, the render context can actually have a different size compared to, to the window itself. So it was necessary to be careful what uh, pieces, um, like n in which parts of the, of the paint you need the, the size of the, of the like, target device, of the, of the render context where you are painting to and where you are actually referencing the size of the entire window. For example, when you are counting uh, like uh, how to place uh, something in the middle of the screen or something like that. So current status. Um, so most of the classes were uh, modified to, to paint only in the paint methods. Now, uh, like this, uh, it is so that, that all the all the paint methods have the render context as a parameter, and most of them have been reviewed uh, to be able to see that uh, that uh, they work uh, correctly with the render context. Start center now completely uses double buffering, so it is flicker flicker free now. A writer is mostly double buffered, except uh, there are still some things that uh, need some improvements. The blinking cursor is one of the examples. 
um, most probably we would like to change to um, to the way that uh, that for example Mozilla is doing that uh, it doesn't invert the the content that is behind uh, but instead uses uh, just just draws uh, the rectangle over that like you know quite thin but still rectangle and you can try it yourself uh, this work is in master and uh, mostly in 5.0 as well so if you when you export this uh, VCL double buffering or enable then you can see and I will also try to show it to you so if you can see here I cannot see it here that well this is the non double buffered case so you can see that when when you are moving, it blinks like crazy. And when I call it with this uh, uh, VCL buffering force enable, it is just completely smooth. So, um, unfortunately, the work is still not uh, not uh, finished. Um, so, for the text cursor, I've already mentioned it would be good to um, get rid of the of the inverting and just uh, you know draw the, the rectangle. Um, the next thing would be switch it on for the start center and writer, um, so that uh, so that uh, it is used in master and people can report bugs. Uh, in case they uh, they see uh, see them, uh, which is a bit challenging because uh, currently it is so that uh, you have the start center, and uh, when you uh, when you start some application inside the start center, it reuses the window. So uh, like it can be that uh, you have the the start center and uh, you start uh, calc, and then it starts appearing directly in this start center window. So we just need to uh, to make sure that uh, we are able to switch the double buffering off uh, in case. Yeah. This is not a to do. It's already possible to do. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so we should just switch it on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Miklos, uh, as I said, and Tomaj are the heroes here. So uh, so just do it. Like, um, <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's let's switch it on to master. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, clean up. Um, once we are using the double buffering, um, like seriously, uh, there are still some things that we had to introduce. Like if double buffering, do it a bit differently than if not double buffering. So for the cases uh, where we are already doing the double the buffering, uh, we can clean that up. Uh, so that uh, it always uses the, the, the double buffering code path and also the small thing of implementing it for calc and press base. So. Sure, question. How do you deal with your, your backend buffer is basically temporary, right? It's, it's a bitmap, it's a right? With one DPI. Right? It's done the, the, the number of pixels per blah blah. The resolution of it. Yeah. How do you deal with the fact that you have a window that could be across two different screens with complete one retina, one not? So now your your virtual thing, you think it's the same thing, but when you display it, if you don't draw it directly, with the system compensating for the fact that this half of the window is physically twice the density than this half, what's it gonna look like when you start to put a bitmap on it directly? Okay, so I just repeat the question. So what happens if you have two screens of various DPIs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so this is something that the LibreOffice doesn't handle uh, by itself either way. So well, today, because we draw directly, the system do that for you. On Mac, it will compensate and do twice more pixels because he knows what's physical. Yeah, what's so I, I never tested this, <laughs> this possibility, so I should, I should, I should. 
Thank you so much.